and none of it was my mess. None of those dirty dishes were mine. I hadn't even been here. So just like little things like that strained our relationship a lot. Um, and we, like we talk, I love him. I just, um, I just had a little family get together yesterday for my daughters. And of course my brother was there, but we're not close. Like, like you would expect us to be not, not for someone who literally saved my life. Like I would want us to be way closer than what we are, but we just have some work to do, I guess. Okay. So, um, so you're going through the depression and uh, suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, when did you end up leaving your brother's house and things started getting crazy for you? Um, right. Um, I left when I was 18. I graduated. I got a little apartment. Um, and I met my ex-husband and the father of my two daughters. So we were together for a couple of years. Um, and I wasn't really like a criminal criminal, but I did a lot of stupid shit. And I had broke into a house one time, stole a bunch of weed and like a, a PlayStation. And this was like the original PlayStation. Um, so then we ended up dipping out and doing gas and goes all the way to North Carolina. Yeah, um, it's where you pull up to the gas tank. This is like back in like 2005. So you didn't have to prepay. I'm damn near the reason that everyone has to prepay for all of their gas because I would just pull up mm -hmm. and put the gas in the car and then put the pump on the ground and not hang it up because when you hang it up, that's when it does that little like beep beep in there to let them know that the gas is done. I would just sit it on the ground and I'll get in the car and I'll drive away. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's like a federal offense to do it in like interstate like that to do it from like Indiana to North Carolina. Um, we didn't have no money. So we just did gas and goes the whole way there, but we made it and we lived um, in North Carolina for like a year. But my baby daddy was super abusive. Um, really controlling, emotionally abusive, physically abusive. Like he gave me whiplash for the first time because he choked me and like just shook me back and forth so crazy that for like two weeks, I couldn't even move my head afterwards because my muscles were so traumatized. Um, but I still married him. I don't know why. Um, we were, I was 22 when we got married. 24 when I got pregnant with my first daughter, um, 25 when I got pregnant again. But while I was pregnant, I found out that he had cheated on me again and we got into a big fight and he beat the shit out of me and I ended up having a miscarriage with my middle child. And then I got pregnant when I was 26 with my second daughter um, and I made the decision to get my tubes tied. And the doctors asked me like a thousand times, like, are you sure you're only 26? You're so young. You only have two daughters. You know, what if you want a son? But I knew that my marriage wasn't going to last forever. Um, and I never in a million years thought that I would ever be without my daughters because I was a stay at home wife and a mom. And I was an amazing mom, like all of that, all of the street shit, all of the break in the law, all of the everything debted. I was a stay at home wife and mom. Like it was my responsible to live by example for my daughters. And I was an amazing mother. Everyone was always telling me how your daughters are so smart, bro. And they're so well behaved and so well mannered. Um, so I knew that I could take care of them by myself if I had to. Every kid that I have after that is another happy meal. It's more Christmas presents. It's another college tuition. So I made the decision to get my tubes tied. Um, continued to stay with my baby daddy. We moved around in different houses. Um, we lived with his mom for a while. We lived with my mom for a while, my adopted mom, my brother's wife. But at this point, they had been divorced and they had each been remarried. But I still consider her my mom. I always will. So like we lived with her and her husband for a while. Got our own house again. Um, and then in 2013, I lost my dad. And if I had to say... Like if I had to pinpoint one specific thing that kind of set my life into the downward spiral that ended me where I was before I picked myself up again, it was probably 
losing my dad. Um, I wouldn't be anything of what I am today if it wasn't for him. That man was my best friend. Um, so when he died, a piece of me definitely died too. Um, and then in 2014, I finally left my ex-husband for good um, because my oldest daughter came up to me one time after a bad fight and she was like, mommy, why does daddy hit you like that? Then I realized that I was just continuing the cycle. Like I was, I wasn't doing anything to change. And my daughters are going to grow up thinking that this is the love that they're supposed to accept from a man, like that this is how a man treats them. And I wasn't okay with that at all. So I left. Um, and at first everything was good. Neither one of my girls were in school yet. They were two and four. So I was sharing custody with my baby daddy. Now it's important to note that we are married. So when you're married in the state of Indiana and you have kids, things get really, really complicated. Um, lots of people would say to me, like, you're their mom. How, how did he end up with them? Well, in the state of Indiana, if you're married, whoever physically has custody of them at the time has custody of them until you go to court. I called the police. I called a bunch of people and they kept telling me the same thing. Like, there's nothing you can do. So things at first, things were OK. We were having them a week on, a week off. Um, and then I just decided, like, you know what? Let me live my life. I've been with this man for 10 years, the best 10 years of my life, per se, from 18 to 28 so that whole time I was loyal with one man, a wife, a mother. I didn't. So even before I had my girls, he had two sons from a previous marriage. So I was stepmom to them before I was ever even a real mom to my daughters. So I never really like went crazy when I turned 18. I never sowed any wild oats. I never did all of the stupid, dumb stuff that people usually do when they're learning the people that they want to become. Um, so I was like, let me, let me have some fun when my girls are safe, they're taken care of, they're with their dad for the week. So just, you know, let me hang out. And then I met the wrong people at the wrong time. Um, and I didn't have my daughters to remind me that there was something better that was meant for me. Um. So when they weren't around, I went right back to who I was when I was like 11, 12, 13, 14. I went right back into that thug mentality, running the streets, hitting licks, breaking the law. And I was around people who did that. I was around like a, a bunch of gangsters. So that just, I just said, fuck it. Um, and just started going crazy again. And then it would be time for me to have my girls. And I would end it. And I was cool. I was just at my mom's house and I was the old me again. So it was like for a little while at the same time, like I was living, I was two completely different people. Um, and then I was with a, um, my friend Drew, who is dead now. Um, and he lit my first foil for me. And I didn't even really know that I, what I was doing because at this point, I had done like some cocaine and stuff, but really all I did was smoke weed. I was just a pothead. So I like, I had never seen meth. I had never seen heroin. I had never seen anything like that. So he just had this aluminum foil and he ran these drugs down it. And he was like, put this straw in your mouth and I'm going to light it and just hit it. And I was smoking meth and I didn't even have any idea like what I was doing. And then I learned like how you could manufacture it. And that's where the real addiction hit. Like I wasn't even really addicted to doing the drugs. I was addicted to how you can create them and like the science behind it. And everything was just so specific and it was almost like magic. Um, so for a year I did hard drugs um, and it was crazy because I, I kind of maintained that double lifestyle Um at this point, Brad was keeping the girls. Brad is my baby daddy. Um, he was keeping the girls the majority of the time because I was just from trap house to trap house moving around and that I wasn't about to even remotely bring my daughters in that environment or around those people. So like every other weekend I would get them and I would go to my mom's. And for that weekend, I was Sarah again. 
I was mom again, no drugs, didn't even miss the drugs because my girls were all I really wanted. But then when it was time for them to go back to their dads, I went right back to the trap house, especially because smoking, smoking dope, like you don't even sleep. So it makes the time go by like that. Before I knew it, two weeks was over and it was time for me to be back with my girls again. And I would make sure I get sleep the night before and I would be rested and I would be normal, good to go. I would have my girls and it would be cool.